All right, so today we're doing problem 3070. Count sub matrices with top left element in some less than K. Okay, so instead of dealing with sub arrays, which are of course, you know, situations where you have continuous slices, all right, some continuous slice of any size of a sub array, you're having sub matrices, which were any continuous sub matrix slice of a, of a matrix, right? Um, and a sub matrix including the top left element, right? So that'd be, you know, a sub matrix kind of pinned at the top left, and then your bottom right pin is anywhere, you know, else in the boundaries of your matrix. And the sum is less than K. So we're doing some summation, so we might need some, you know, prefix, some kind of idea in order to, you know, efficiently calculate the sums of things. So when you do prefix sums, it's kind of like a dynamic programming, not really, but, you know, it's this idea where, you know, like, okay, the sum here is something plus the previous sum we've already done and you catch that information so you can efficiently uh, solve the problem. Okay, so you're given a zero index integer matrix grid, okay? Uh, they kind of just assume that you know that a grid is, you know, a two dimensional uh, object like, you know, this here uh, and an integer K, all right? So that K is that value that you're trying to find if each sub matrix is less than or equal to that K value. Return the number of sub matrices that contain the top left element of the grid and have a sum less than or equal to K. Okay, so one quick thing to kind of just note, and I was a little bit confused about this idea is what is a sub matrix really, right? What constitutes a sub matrix and what doesn't? So let's just draw out a bunch of random elements here. All right. All right, now a sub matrix is basically, now remember, we can talk about a general sub matrix, but let's talk about sub matrix from the context of this problem, which is a sub matrix that start, starts at the top left. So it contains this element here, right? Now at any point when you make a sub matrix, it's basically, it has to go all the way to the left and all the way up if you're gonna contain zero, zero, right? So a sub matrix between these two points is basically you connect them with their rows and their columns and then fill everything in between, right? So that would be a sub matrix here. Right. Um, another sub matrix would be, you know, here and here. Well, then everything to the left, everything above, and then everything in between. All right. Always some delay here on my computer. All right. Uh, another example would be, you know, here, if this is a sub matrix uh, here. Everything to the left, everything above, and everything in between. Okay, so that's the examples of what sub matrices are. Are now what sub matrices aren't are, for example, like here. Right, this is not a sub matrix. This is not a sub matrix, right? Because if it's going to be a sub matrix, it's that everything to the left, everything above, and everything in between. Okay, so just remember that when you think about what a sub matrix is, you're basically like drawing two points and then like doing the rows in between them, the columns in between them, and then filling out that area. Okay, so this problem kind of has strict rules about the areas that you can consider, right? But when you look at something like, you know, this, you can't be like, oh, you know, this is a sub matrix because maybe this element's super big or something, right? So just understand that sub matrices have this like, they're, they're rectangles, right? And they're filled out, or they're squares, rectangles, and they're filled out. They're not just like any weird shape that you can, you know, get out of this. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and do the uh, example first and see if we can kind of gain some sort of intuition about how this problem is going to be solved. All right, so 763661. Okay, 763661. All right, 763661. All right, so um, here, what we're going to do pretty much is, is what? What are we going to do here? We're gonna believe in ourselves. That's that's the primary thing that we're gonna do. Um, we have our k value as 18. Okay, so any sub matrix with the value less than 18, we're gonna count for. So the first sub matrix starting at the top is this seven by itself. Is seven less than 18? Yes, it is. Okay, we can consider this next one too. So it's seven six seven plus six is uh, 13. Is that less than 18? Yes. Okay. How about this next one? Seven six three. Is seven plus six plus three less than 18? Well, seven plus six is uh, 13. Why did that just happen? Did you guys see that? Whoa, did you guys know that? It's so stupid. Like, 
I'm getting a delay in the... I have a delay here because I don't know, and it's using processing power to try to figure out what hand signals I'm using. There was, there's no reason to do that. There's absolutely no reason to have that functionality. That's just silly. Whatever. Maybe I can turn that off and it'll improve the quality of the camera feed. Or maybe it's not a function of that at all, but I, I don't know. Anyways, I got distracted there. So how many do we have so far? We have uh, three, right? Now, this is not a sub, array, a sub matrix, right? So we can delete that and say seven plus six is that one. Yep, that's four. Now here's where it gets weird, right? So if I go over, well, I also have to contain this. So seven plus six plus six plus six. So 18 plus seven, 25, is that less than 18? No, it's not, right? So that's not one. Uh, and neither would anything after this point, right? And you know, you might feel inclined, again, just think about what a submatrix actually is. You say, okay, six plus three, nine plus seven, that's um, a 16. So if I add this and I get 17, right? So maybe this is another one, but remember it has to be a submatrix, right? A submatrix has to look like this. It has to be a rectangle. You can't have like these weird, like snaky swivel kind of situations, right? So although that looks good, uh, it's not actually a submatrix, so you don't count it. So how many did we count for in total? Four, right? And here's the four, right? The first one, the second one, the third one, and the one going down. Okay, now of course for this problem, we could technically at each point, look at all the submatrices at that point, right? So you look at this point, because each each point has a unique submatrix associated with it, right? Like this point has a unique submatrix, and it's this one, right? There's only one submatrix ending at that point. This isn't a submatrix, like this isn't a submatrix, a submatrix starting from the top left. This isn't one, right? So each point, it's important to notice that they only have one unique submatrix, right? So we could literally look at this submatrix, count it up, see what happens. Look at this submatrix alone, count it up, see what happens. Look at this submatrix alone, count it up, see if it's less than K. Look at this submatrix, count it up, see if it's less than K. Look at this submatrix, count it up, see if it's less than K. Look at this submatrix, count it up, and we can do that for each point because each point has a unique submatrix. So we look at every unique submatrix at each point and determine if its sum is less than K. Okay, now that would work, but we get a time limit exceeded error because, well, M is grid length, N is the length of grid, uh, the row, so rows and columns, M and N. N and M are both less than or equal to 1,000. So in the worst case, N is 1,000, M is 1,000. That's 10 to the 6 elements, right? Because N times N, 10 to the 6. You know, 10 cubed times 10 cubed, 10 to the 6 elements. And, um, well, if you have any algorithm that's slower than N or N log N, it's going to time out, right? So doing this where you look at every unique subarray, right? You look at this point, you look at all the subarrays, you look at this point, you look at all the subarrays. That's going to take N square time, right? Because for every element, you have to look at all the elements that come before it and are above it. Um, so that, that scales with n squared, right? So, um, that's too slow, right? So we need to find a more efficient way to do this calculation. All right. And I guess the best way to determine the prefix sum nature of this is to just walk through the problem a little bit and think about reusability, right? Like what kind of things can we reuse here that we've already solved in order to make the calculation of the subsequent subarray faster? more efficient. Okay. So I'm actually going to make this different. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to write this out. So let's just call this A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. Okay. Now let's just start churning through subarrays. Okay. Let's look at this subarray first and we'll say, okay, our zero, zero subarray is just A. All right, what would be this next subarray? Well, one quick thing is, well, this is just the previous subarray plus the current element, right? The previous subarray to the left, right? So the previous subarray to the left is A. So zero, one would be A plus B. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's a better way. Let's call this the, the sum of each of these D at the element, all right? So D of zero, zero equals A. D of zero, one equals B plus D of zero, zero, which equals A plus B, okay? D of zero, two, so row zero, column two, that's what this means. So row zero, column two is, well, it's this plus whatever came before it, which is D of zero, one. So that would just be C plus 
d of 0, 1, which equals a plus b plus c. So what I'm already doing now is I'm catching a little bit of information to make this a little bit more efficient, right? And then what would d of 0, 3 be? d of 0, 3 would be um, d plus d of 0, 2. Now, since I've already calculated d of 0, 2, I don't need to walk back and calculate everything again. I've already catched that information here, right? So that would be a plus b plus c. I already have that value calculated plus d. All right. So there's a little bit of a like a tweak to make this a little bit quicker. Now, what would d of 1, 0 be? Well, it wouldn't be d of 1, negative 1. That doesn't make sense, right? There's nothing to the left. But what does it actually include? Well, this subarray is AE. So it's really D of 0, 0 plus A. So that's a bit weird. I mean, plus E, which equals A plus E. All right. So now I'm trying to walk through this and think of what's the relationship between one sum and other sums so we can quickly uh, find this. It's kind of easy with the row, but now that we're dealing with columns, it's a little bit weirder, right? What about this one? So this would be D of 1, 1. Well, before I was just the thing that was be that was previous, right? But if it was, notice that D of 1, 0 is this. So it's not, it's not this subarray. Right, it's actually this element, everything to its left and everything that's above, right? So how would you get this relationship in kind of efficiently, you know? It's a little bit weird, right? So. Kind of the weird thing here, right, is, well, what is the actual element value here at F, okay? And a general way of thinking of that is let's just think of this simple scenario. So I say simple, right? All right, let's say we're trying to calculate this element here. If we knew the value of this subarray here, this sub matrix here, then the sum here is just the sum of these elements. So it's the sum of the blue elements plus the sum of the green elements plus the new pink element. Does that make any sense here? So it's this elements sub matrix sum is, well, the new sub matrix looks like this. Right? So the only thing that's missing is why well, I can take X. If I already know what this sub matrix sum is, and I know what the sum of this row is, I can get X efficiently. Right? So when I'm looking at um, F, well, I already know what the sum of this is. This is just D of 0, 1. So it's really D of 0, 1 plus the running sum to my left. So I'll just call that R. So I'll keep a running sum of my left called R plus the current element that I'm looking at, G. So my running sum would be just E. D, 0, 1 would be A plus B. And my current element would be F. And then I'd update my running sum. So all I need to do to track this, right, is for any element, the previous rows value at that sub matrix, that's everything above. And then everything to my left is just a running sum that I can run through, right? So instead what I'll do when I solve this with this kind of notion uh, articulated is, well, this really isn't D0, D01, D02. I'll just update my running sum as I go through here, right? So this will be my current running sum plus the element that's above it, okay? So, da, da, da. so generally, how do we use that to solve uh, uh, this here? Okay, so when we have, or we'll do this longer one here, uh, 729, 
We got uh, 729, 150, 266. I'm wearing these glasses to be cool and I can't see anything. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? All right. So the way that we'll solve this is we'll keep track of like a running sum and then we'll keep a track of the D values at each row, okay? So our running sum initially is nothing. When we look at seven, our running sum will be seven and our D of zero, zero will equal D of the row above, which would be negative one, zero plus our running sum plus the current element, plus the running sum. We'll update the running sum as we update the element. So that would be zero plus our running sum, which is seven equals seven, okay? Then we add to our running sum two. So now our running sum is nine, right? Because I'm trying to keep track of everything to my left and everything that's above and combine those things to get this answer, right? So D01 would equal D of negative one, zero plus our running sum, which would be zero plus nine equal nine. All right, then I'll add nine to my running sum equals 18 because I'm now processing this. The first row is a little bit weird, okay? D02 is um, D, this is a one here, negative one, two plus R, which is zero plus 18, which equals 18, all right? Uh, maybe I'll put this little D array here on the side so you can see the values as we populate them. All right, so this is seven, two, nine. Uh, no, this is seven, nine, 18. Those, so those are the values of the submatrix ending at that value. Now we're looking here. Since we're at a new row, what's to my, I called it R for right, but it's actually what's to your left. Ah, right, right, left, right. What's to your left? There's nothing to my left, so my R value restarts at zero and I add in the current element, so my R value becomes one. And now I'm saying D of one zero equals D of zero zero plus R. D of zero zero seven plus one is eight. So this value becomes eight. Now when we're looking at this value is where it gets interesting, right? So we're here. Well, that would be the previous rows value here plus our running sum. So that would be, R would now be uh, six. So D of, one, one equals D of zero, one plus R, All right? So my running sum to the left is one, one plus five, which is six, right? And the thing above is nine, so that'd be 18. And is that true? Is that truly what this value is here? Is seven plus two, Oh, wait, no, it's six. Six plus, six plus nine, 15, sorry. All right, because the running sum is six. Zero, one is nine. Six plus nine, 15, All right? And I can do that for the whole system going forward. So now the next here would be one, five, six. Six plus 18 is, um, so I don't even know walk through. I can just walk through. Six plus 18 is 24. Okay, here running sum is zero again, plus my top is eight, my current value is two, so that's nine. Is that true? Oh, my top eight, my top val my value is two, so that'd be 10. All right, my top is 15. My running sum would be uh, eight, 15 plus eight, 23. All right, so I'm trying to populate this thing using my head, so give me a break if I'm wrong. 14, 14 plus 24, 36, All right? So that that's an efficient way of doing this, right? So efficient, basically what you're doing is you know everything, if you pre-calculate everything as you go from row to row, you know everything above. So then as you go left, you keep track of everything to your left. You know everything above here. And then you just add in this current value. Okay. Hopefully that makes some sense. A little bit hand wavy. Of course, we're going to do the code right now. And maybe that'll solidify everything for you. But maybe not. Right. These problems aren't ever that easy, but uh, you know, that's a, just a prefix sum notion, right? So you're keeping prefix sums of things and just make sure you get your relationship right so you can uh, write it out. Okay. So uh, one last thing, I guess, is you don't need the whole system because, you know, when I calculate this, 
I only need the value from the previous row, right? So I don't, this information is no longer relevant. Um, so I'll just keep track of the values from the previous row and use that as I walk through, okay? So we're gonna have our number of solutions, we'll call that res equals zero. And at the end, we're gonna return res, right? Okay. Now I'm gonna have this D, this D value we have, but remember, it doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be, we don't, we only need to keep track of the previous row, right? Because for every element, we only need the previous row's value to figure out what that sub matrix is and everything to the left, right? So we have D equals this, R equals zero. I call it R in the code, I don't know why. So, I mean, in the uh, notes, so I'm just gonna call it R here to be consistent. Okay, now what we're doing is we're looking at uh, each, row in grid and we're looking for each column in grid in range so this is just you know simple code that will get you to look at each row in each column in row order so you're gonna like collect this next row next row now the first thing we said was that Every time we look at a new row, right, the R value becomes zero. So we don't actually need to define it here. All right. We're going to add in the current R value. So we're going to say R plus equal grid at RRCC. And we said that the value here at D, so the value D at this column, right, because the column would be, you know, what we're looking at each uh, situation, right, each column here equals, well, the current running sum in whatever the column was before. And we say, if that is greater, if that's less than, if the sum here is less than K, less than or equal to, well, we just found another solution. Right now, this might be a little bit confusing here, and uh, maybe I'll draw it out a little bit. I'm not gonna expand too much on it, but, uh, is worth mentioning. Can you see me or my iPad? You're my iPad. My iPad. Okay. Um, local variable if DCC less than K ops. Why do I call it ops? It's because I'm wearing these glasses, so I feel cool. So I'm trying to run from the ops. You know what I mean? Index out of range. Ah, because this would be grid zero. Because it's the number of columns that correspond to. Okay, so let's go back here. So why did I, so I made D a matrix here, but then there I only made an array. Well, something to think about, right, is, um. you know, you only need to keep track of the previous row, right? So when you're looking at this, you know, you know this is 7, 9, 18. But then when you get here, it's only based on the previous row and going back, right? When I get here, all of this information above this line is irrelevant, right? So I only need to keep track of the row values and to populate those and update those accordingly, right? So when this becomes seven nine, seven nine eighteen, when I'm here, well, it just becomes seven plus one, so this value changes to eight. When I get here, this becomes nine plus six, so this becomes a 15. When I get here, it becomes 18 plus six, which is a 24, right? And now when I'm here, it's based on this eight to get me to 10, right? And when I'm here, it's based on this uh, 15 to get me to 21, right? But it doesn't matter what these things were before because everything's just based off the previous value. So that's the reason why it's uh, like that, okay? So what is the space and time complexity of this solution? So uh, N is the length of grid. M is the length of grid zero. So there's NM elements in total. So if you have an NM solution, it'd be linear with a number of elements. Okay. Um, for time, well, we create this thing. It's going to take M time. And then we look at all rows and all columns and we do a constant operation, right? So we find the current element, we add that in, we add two things together, we make a comparison, so that's constant time. So we do N, 
m together and the constant operations in, inside of those so that's nm time for space we create this thing and it's m space and then we look at all rows and all columns and we add in accordingly but we only update the row right the row is the same row that keeps getting updated so that's o of m space now you could make this code where you know you could do this row by row or you could do it column by column right so technically you could make this the min of m and n basic and this is kind of just an extra you know extra credit point here but the idea is you know you could do this row by row or column by column and since you're only saving information for the row you could save information for the row or the column so you could do the minimum of either and it would be the same operation but it would just be a little bit tweaking to this to make it like to have the condition where okay if m is less than n well then we'll go row by row if n is less than m we'll go column by column okay i hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day sorry about the poor explanation today bye bye